Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Patrick Dalin. Today we're going to talk about a very common misconception about insulin. A misconception very well spread around in the low carb slash ketogenic community. Namely, the role of insulin and how often everything, if it's good or bad for weight loss or for ketosis, has to do about insulin or not. This is, however, very wrong. And I will show you a few examples why this is. Insulin is a hormone. Hormones are messengers. And you might be familiar with the expression, don't kill the messenger. It is the same here. Insulin is simply a hormone that sends a message for one, and in particular one, carbohydrate namely the sugar glucose. However, if you ingest any other carbohydrates that contains any other sugars, the effect in the body is similar despite or regardless of if insulin is released or not. It's just a messenger for one sugar. The other sugar will get the job done in the same way with or without insulin. And why is this important? It's important because I myself have seen two waves of low carb ketogenic diets. The first was a smaller wave than the one we've had now recent 10 years. It was in the 90s. And it kind of died because died out <laughs> the trend, so to say, because uh, people got the root cause incorrect. They started just as this time to blame everything on insulin and be very focused on insulin. And then people start to make their own choices and suddenly the low carb clinic diet didn't work. And we are in the same situation again. Uh, and, and this is because a lot of gurus who or either have no educational background or they're medical doctors, they talk about insulin because that's all they know. They learn about the body, the organs and the hormones, but not much about cellular chemistry, molecular biologically, and so on and so forth. So we, therefore their knowledge stops, it doesn't go into any more detail, and therefore they believe that this is the root cause of how the body treats or what happens in the body when you eat carbohydrates. But it's not, it's just a messenger that tells one cell want to communicate to the others what it's doing, and send out that message. But there are lots of intracellular intracellular regulation mechanism that will have any sugar to exit you out of ketosis if you're in ketosis or have you gain weight if you eat too much of them and it has not to do with insulin and this is important because right now as in the first wave people start to expand what they can eat in ketosis or in low carb diet we start very strict and then people add keto cookies, uh, friendly carbohydrates, net carbohydrates, non-insulinogenic non -insul sugars and so on and so forth. But this is just BS. There is not such a thing as better carbohydrates or net carbohydrates. Um, everything that is a carbohydrate or a derivative whereof, like sugar alcohols, will have the same impact in the body. And it also goes for other substrates that goes into the glycolysis. So anything glycogenic will stop ketosis or add to your total carb amount. You can't just count the net carbs or the uh, insulin-raising carbohydrates. It doesn't work like that. And the simple reason for that, I will show you some research also on this, but the simple reason for this, why it doesn't have to do with uh, insulin, is that when you eat carbohydrates, they cannot be stored. You have very limited storage uh, room for them. So therefore, if you eat something that you cannot store large amount of, what will the body do? What can it store a large amount of fat? See, if carbohydrates and fat at the same time, it will store the fat. 
because we ha can store loads of fat, kilos of fat. But carbohydrates, maybe we can store half a kilo and often 400 grams of those 100 grams are already stored because the body keeps a reserve of carbohydrates because we need them if we need to run away or fight or something. And this happens regardless of if insulin is present or not. It doesn't matter if you eat glucose that raise insulin or fructose that do not really raise insulin or any sugar, alcohol like xylitol or glycerol uh, or anything else that is directly converted to anything within the glycolysis pathway. And the glycolysis pathway is a 10-step um, chemical reaction that happens in the body, in the cells from glucose down to pyruvate and there's 10 steps there. And if you eat anything that goes into one of those 10 steps, it will right away count as carbohydrates. So if you get over your limit, if that is 20, 40, or 50 grams per day that you can eat to stay in ketosis, this anything you eat will add to that amount and kick out of ketosis, regardless of insulin or not. So, and, and this pathway, this discoveries are quite old. The ketogenic pathways were discovered and mapped out by Hans Krebs uh, in the 1950s. Uh, Krebs is the same person who were given the name to the Krebs cycle or the citric acid cycle, as it's also called. He did not only do that, which gave him a Nobel Prize later. He only mapped out the fat oxidation, the beta oxidation and the production of acetoacetate and beta doxyberate among other things, and those are the ketones. So his paper on ketosis from, I think it's 1954, contains 10 times more information about ketosis than any average medical doctor knows about. And of course, since then, we discovered more things. This is taught in biochemistry school, uh, where I went. But it's not taught much, if at all, in medical school, simply because doctors don't need to know about it. They need to know about symptoms and medication for them, or surgery if there are surgeries. Uh, but they don't need to know these things, so therefore they're not taught them. So let's look at one of these studies where people started to experiment on how ketosis and ketone production is inhibited or enhanced by various type of compounds and, and this research was done most in the 60s and 70s and you can look that this is in the medical literature but only the outcome of it when they need to know about it for example if someone comes in with ketoacidosis which is not the same thing as nutritional ketosis is a condition usually comes from diabetes type 1 can also come from uh, very heavy consumption of alcohol since ethanol, alcohol we drink, turns into acetate, which is uh, the shortest fatty acid. And you can actually get so much of it that you get too much ketones. So how do they treat this if someone come in with ketoacidosis? Well, they give them in, in most countries, this might vary a little bit depending where you live, but in general, they give them a combination of glucose, fructose, and sorbitol. Sorbitol is also a sugar alcohol. Uh, in some places, they do not even give glucose, only fructose, sorbitol, and maybe xylitol. It varies a little bit. But the focus is on the non insulinogenic uh, sugars because they often stop ketosis faster than glucose and also since they do not raise insulin they're a little bit safer because other things to, concern, to consider uh, once it comes to treating patients uh, a sudden spike of insulin can be dangerous you might um, you might uh, be drained of some electrolytes also it's the same reason if you fast for more than three four days if you have longer fast you need to start to eat very slowly uh, you can uh, encounter something called the fasting syndrome or eating syndrome after fasting of the same reason if insulin goes up too fast when it's been low so long. So if you look for example at uh, a study here, Jacob, 1971, if you search that you will find it. 
uh, where they looked at various type of uh, molecules added and you can see they are in ketosis to start with the number is 55 here the, 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 the units here aren't the units we use today and it's the same when you when you try to find these things you might not be able to sign on beta hydroxybitrate because they more often use the chemically or stringent name 3 hydroxybutyrate so when much research from 50s, 60s and 70s you need to search for 3 hydroxybitrate and not beta hydroxy that's a bit more popular name but it's not strictly the formal name of beta hydroxybitrate anyway uh, you can see if the patients have got xylitol which is a sugar alcohol doesn't raise insulin that much it's added in a lot of candies and protein bars and sometimes so-called keto-friendly snack uh, it brings down the ketones to 15 from 55 to 15 quite a drop also if you add lactate it goes down to 20 and lactate is the reduced version of pyruvate pyruvate is reduced to lactate when you are doing something so fast that the glycolysis need to go faster than the Krebs cycle but of course when you take lactate it goes back to pyruvate and as I said anything in that goes into those 10 step of the glycolysis will inhibit ketosis lactate is one of them then you can see they also try lactate plus oleate and oleate is a fatty acid uh, the most common fatty acid in our cells it's also the most abundant fatty acid in olive oil uh, and that stimulates uh, ketone production uh, because uh, the body do believe that we are burning our own fat when it gets oleic acid because that is how it measures what is what is comes in and what is uh, what substrate is using so it stimulates ketone production so that's Jacob 1971 you also have Dennis from 1971 where you can see that it is kind of similar instrument experiment you had some people fasted and some people not fasted and the fasted people have 173 in micromoles per 100 grams of total ketones so these papers also look at beta hydroxybutyrate and acetacetate in specific and some other details i'm just giving you the the summary and what to, to show my show the case i'm talking about here if they add a glucose 11 millimolar and also insulin it went down not that much from 173 to 161 despite insulin however if they added fructose with no insulin it went from 173 to 74 you see fructose who does not give a spike in insulin brings out the ketosis faster than glucose does that is why it's used to treat ketoacidosis. Glycerol, which is also sugar alcohol, that is um, easily converted to pyruvate in the in glycolysis, glycolysis, brings it down to 81. And then we have lactate again, as in the other uh, experiment, it also brings it down. So as you see, it doesn't matter if you have insulin or not the fact is even the reverse that many other sugars and sugar alcohols and their derivatives will kick out the ketosis faster than glucose does so therefore when the trend has become to have keto snacks keto friendly carbs allowed carbohydrates allowed sugars good sugars nut carbs non-insulin rising raising carbs it doesn't work it doesn't matter anything that can be converted to a carbohydrate will kick out to ketosis and this was a little bit what ended the first wave or trend on uh, low carbon king diet in the 90s uh, and i can see now that many people jump it off and say it doesn't work any longer and there's many reasons for that one is if you do the same thing for a long time it will work less just as if you're training the same way for a long time it will not have the same effect after a while 
So that's the several reasons for why people experience it doesn't work. But but one of them is that they're misinformed about what they can and cannot eat. They started strict, no carbs, and then people are creative and say, um, since the reason is insulin, which is incorrect, we can eat this and this also, which you cannot. And therefore the success of the diet uh, diminishes. Uh, we will also go in uh, in next video to look at this on actually weight gain because it's the same. It doesn't matter if you have insulin, they are not on weight gain. Uh, if you eat carbohydrates with too much fat, you will eat too much and will gain weight with without the insulin. It's the same when people get type 2 diabetes. When they're pre-diabetic, they were high in insulin, start to gain some weight. After a while, the insulin goes down below normal values when you develop diabetes, and then the weight gain goes faster. So we look at those in separate videos because I think this is an important point to understand how the low carbon ketone diet works if you want it to work. Because it's not about insulin. That is also why you can lose weight on a high carb, low fat diet. That is almost as effective as a low carb diet. You can lose weight very effectively on high protein diets, regardless of, pretty much regardless of how you distribute the carbs and fat. It can be low carb, medium carb, low fat, medium fat, as long as it's high in protein. And protein also increases insulin. So it does not have to do with that that you lose weight. It does not have to do with insulin if you kick out the ketosis or not. Sure, if insulin in if you inject some insulin, that will bring down beta hydroxybutyrate rate. But not as yet at stage, it's only beta hydroxybutyrate rate that is regulated uh, to some extent by insulin and also glucagon. Uh, whereas if you have too much of any monosaccharide in the cell, is there is an enzyme that then cuts the production of acetoacetate and therefore you don't get beta hydroxybutyrate. So the shutdown is much more harder when it's the intercellular mechanism doing it. And that is what happens with those non-insulin driving sugars like fructose, sorbitol, xylitol and so on and so forth. They go into the cell and act on an enzyme and when that enzyme acts it shuts everything down. Because the intercellular regulations are usually stronger than the uh, Hormonic, uh, hormonal re uh, regulations because when a cell organ does something and it wants everyone to know what's going on then it communicates by hormones to prepare others for the same thing but that's just a messenger then these cells will act on that to some extent but they will also take in the substrate and the enzymes and the regulators in the cell will also act upon it Usually these things say the same thing, so it will just enhance that actions. If they do not say the same thing, that is for example when they develop diabetes. Then it's a contradiction about the signals the body gets. For both of type 1 and type 2, but different type of mis mismatching the signals. So anyway, uh, this was the, what I wanted to show you today. Uh, the ketogenic diet and that you simply cannot eat anything that turns into carbohydrate. If you want to stay in ketosis, you need to keep the total amount below your tolerance, which often is around 50 grams. Uh, to enter ketosis, usually you should go down to maybe 20, but while in there, in particular exercise, you can usually eat more carbohydrates and st still be in ketosis. Okay, thank you for watching. If you like this, if you want more of this, uh, please like, please subscribe, uh, please share in particular in the low-carb ketone community. <clears throat> I'm sure we'll be make some people upset that build a life on insulin, but uh, the research is the research and it's very clear. So, have a nice day and see you next time. Thanks for watching.